Hello, and thank you all for being here. I'm joined by Christopher Patno and Keely Cat Wells, and I'll let them both give a brief description about why they're here today, and, and we'll kick off our conversation on inclusive marketing as well as product design and inclusion. Sure, thank you so much. Happy to jump in. So I'm Keely. I'm the founder of C-Talent, which is a talent management and consulting company that represents high-profile deaf and disabled talent. I, like many people, acquired my disability when I was, uh, well, later in life, when I was around 17 years old. I was undiagnosed, misdiagnosed for a very, very long time. And when I became disabled and left hos hospital, I realized that the world around me was no longer built with me in mind. I didn't self see myself represented in film and TV, and I actually ended up losing a job due to discrimination after disclosing my chronic illness and disability. So that is what led to the founding of C Talent, and our goal is to change the way the world views and defines disability using the massive power that we have within the film, TV, and media industries. And my name is Christopher. I lead accessibility and disability inclusion for this little company called Google. You might have heard of us. Um, I fell into this work because my product wasn't accessible. I had an engineer come into our, one of our meetings. She turned on voiceover, and I heard button, 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 button. I asked, what's that? And she said, well, this is Google Play Music for someone who's blind. I said, well, that's stupid. How do you use it? I said, well, that's why I'm here. So that led me to the place where I am now, where I lead accessibility and disability inclusion for EMEA, trying to understand the needs of people with disabilities across the Europe, the Middle East, and Africa, bringing it back inside to Google so we can understand how we can make our products better, and at the same time, share with the tools that we have today that might help them in their lives as it stands today. Thank you. Thank you both for your introduction. And my name is Daniela Decker. I'm the director of Access Consulting at Sea Talent, uh, working alongside Keeley. And so, Krista, we've been following your work for quite some time with all of the incredible things you're doing, specifically in London and the UK. Um, would love to hear a little bit of a description, maybe, on your aha moment for the Accessibility Center um, based in the UK. And, and what are some of the most unique innovations that have come out of that work in just the last couple of months? Yeah, so the, the Accessibility Discovery Center, it's in the, the seventh floor of our main engineering building inside London in our King's Cross office. And it, it was designed to sort of represent the ethos of nothing about us without us. Half of the space is dedicated towards understanding the needs of people with disabilities. It's, uh, there's a collaboration station about two, uh, where we can fit up to 25 people, where we bring the community inside to understand what's broken, what are the opportunities, how we can make these things better. It also has a station where we bring people one at a time so that we can understand how does this innovation work for them. Hmm. We have eye tracking, for example, to see where the heat map is on, on a web page to see is it too hard to understand. We take videos and we use this research to feed that back into our product team so we can make our products more accessible. On the other side is, is a tech space where we have video games. We have three stations of video games made in partnership with Everyone Can, a disability a charity that uses video games to treat kids with disabilities and then, to, to assess them and then, using the same video games, upskill them because it's a whole lot more fun to play a video game than it is to do exercises. So with their collaboration, we built three stations. One is using eye tracking to, 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 to literally race cars. Hmm. We have another game called... Well, it's unfortunately called Ding Dong XL. A really <laughs> great game. Not the best name, but it's, it's, it's a, a single button game, but we're using a head switch. Hmm. And the third is FIFA 2022, because, because England, but you put the chin joystick and finger switches. Hmm. And, and what's really cool is we actually even, we were inspired by Twitch and we have video screens hmm. of the kids from this, from, from Everyone Can, playing the game. So you see this kid and you see them frankly, playing the game better than you are. Hmm. So it, you were using the, the video games to sort of teach about accessibility, to teach about assistive technology. It's just a tool. Hmm. It's how you interact with it. And then we have the, the regular tables of, of kits of traditional assistive technologies like braille displays and stuff like that. We also have the sections on the dimensions for more modern technology. So we have a, a cognitive and dexterity station. We've got a hearing station and a vision station. And we designed these in conjunction with local advocacy organizations and charities like RNIB for blindness and RNID for deaf and hard of hearing because we needed to partner with the community to make sure we told a local and authentic story. Hmm. And I'm almost done. But the, and I'm really glad I did because as deep as I am in the technology, even I forgot about BSL. Hmm. So I'm thinking about all of the tech and we brought in the RNID. They said, well, where's the BSL? 
okay. <laughs> what? You, you don't have anything for BSL. Oh my, I utterly forgot. So for me, that sort of represents you have to build with the community because you're going to miss something important if you don't. Absolutely. And I think that's part of the work that we do with the consulting practice at Sea Talent, which is really ensure that the disabled community is included from concept to completion. And Akili, I know that one of our most prominent points is to make sure that disabled people are included in that entire journey, as well as that entire marketing journey as well. And so maybe if you want to touch on a few points in which we've taken something from, com from concept to completion and really seen a proactive change when disabled people are included in that entire narrative and storytelling piece. Yeah, absolutely. And I think a, a kind of for some background, we started by representing disabled actors, disabled writers, and disabled uh, producers within Hollywood. And uh, we were recently acquired by Whaler, which is a creator commerce company, and they primarily work within the creator economy. And the reason why we have gone more into that space, as well as our work within Hollywood, is because in 2020, with our disabled talent not being able to go on set and on productions, we started working with disabled digital talent um, and creators. And we realized that disabled talent have been really creating and changing the narrative like never before. Like we haven't been able to do because of the lack of accessibility, because of the gatekeepers within Hollywood, but we've been able to do that on social media. And disabled people have been creating their own projects on social media from start to finish. They've been involved in every decision that goes into their content and it's been creating a huge impact across various, many, many diverse audiences. And that work has actually been what has been influencing Hollywood and products and accessibility. Um, so we've done some great work with companies like Sesame Street and Netflix, ensuring that disabled people are both represented in front and behind the camera. And I think to the point of accessibility and product design, you know, whilst accessibility is such an important, crucial step, that alone will not solve ableism. So that is why we need disabled people to be a part of the implementation, the, the findings, all the way through to the storytelling piece and the continuation and the growth of that product, whether that is a film, whether that is a, a piece of a gaming equipment, uh, and so on. Yeah, and I think you can take true parallels from both what's happening in the film industry as well as product design and inclusion and in saying, when we're talking about a um, disabled character represented in film, that consultation piece is critical and important to that character development, the same way it would be to a product or a game. And so, Christopher, I'm curious what that might have looked like um, while you're developing some of these games and prototypes from scratch to completion as well. It includes an awful lot of making mistakes mm. and, and coming at this humbly because you can't understand the needs of people unless you bring them in. And even when you bring them in, you're still going to have your own biases and expectations of how things are supposed to work. So it's, it's a whole bunch of creative chaos <laughs> that's designed to create something thoughtful in, in the end. It's like, like anything creative in Hollywood or in Silicon Valley or, or in London, the creative process is, is inherently chaotic. You can't plan how to do it exactly because reality always gets in the way. But when you come at it from, with an intention for inclusion, it's, it when it's part of the DNA, it's part of the oxygen you, oxygen you breathe, it becomes easier. Mm. And then you get to focus on the really fun stuff, the, the innovation and the, and the creative ideas that really make it delightful or unique or interesting. So you, you, you mess around a bunch, you learn a bunch, and then you, you build a bunch. Break and then fix, right? And we certainly know quite a few things of, of that nature when it's an iterative process to get to the final point. And then, of course, you're iterating it again and again. And I'm sure there's plenty of examples from Sea Talent and in the last couple of years as the company has started. Um, would love to hear more about the campaign piece as well as we're including creators as part of that journey and that process. Yeah, I th and I think too, that is when, and Christopher, the work that you're doing, that is when it's also gonna become normal to have accessibility and disabled people in every single product in all of the work we often we all everyone here at this event uses the saying nothing about us without us and really it's nothing without us full stop so we've got to remember that disabled people are also subjects experts in subjects beyond just disability and that's also the power of these campaigns to be able to include disabled people not just in the campaigns that are specific to uh, to accessible products but 
all products. Um, but I do think it is incredibly important that when products are being launched that are specifically created with accessibility in mind and have been inspired by the community to have those campaigns led by disabled people. And I think what the beauty of Sea Talent in particular is these are real people, right? This isn't um, a photo of a disabled person uh, that isn't authentic, meaning that person actually isn't disabled in a campaign uh, pretending to use a wheelchair, right? And making sure that authentic representation, specifically in marketing, when it's a product design or product inclusion component, is critical to that piece and that narrative. Um, Christopher, curious on yeah. any of those marketing pieces as well. well what it, it, not from a marketing perspective, but from a design perspective, um, Rama Giraro, who is the the, the, the head of excessive, uh, is the director of inclusive design for the Helen Hamlin Center. Mm. He once said that you want to work with people and design for mm. people, not for profiles. Mm -hmm. Is the one thing about profiles is they're always smiling, mm. <laughs> and 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 it's true because they, it's always a picture taking off a shutterfly or whatever, yeah. and and it's, it's it's not a real person. You have all these descriptions of this fake person, and a yep. fake person can't tell you what sucks. Yeah. You need to work with real people. And then when you're working with people with disab disabilities, then the interesting question is how disabled is disabled enough? We were yeah. having that conversation early. Um, some people don't recognize their own disability. Some people are not embarrassed, but they don't, they don't like, in, in, I'll speak for myself. The, my disability is dyslexia, but I didn't recognize it until later. I just knew it was really bad at certain things. Mm. And I've had conversations with several people where we, we, we say, I don't feel disabled enough to own the title. So now when we're talking about nothing about us without us, how do you define us? Mm -hmm. And who is us enough to be us? I would love to throw in the point here of disability pride mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think what I'm still learning is that it is okay to still have a complicated, with your, a complicated relationship with your medical conditions and still have disability pride and be proud of being disabled. And I think that's also one of the small reasons why so many people don't identify as disabled or disclose their disabilities or even purchase products that are specifically designed for disabled audiences. Mm. Um, it's a very fascinating conversation. I think why we also have a lack of data, reliable data and, and stats around, around the population. Absolutely, and I, and I think one of the key important pieces there is ensuring that, again, disabled people are included in, in that entire marketing journey, because if not, you're representing and excluding an entire group of people, right? Whether they be deaf and no BSL or ASL or blind and not actually be able to enter your website to purchase the product. And that's what we often find is there's these specific products specifically for groups when it should be the beginning of the journey, not the end. Um, and, and that's the critical important piece from accessibility, as we all know. I'm curious, though, as action steps, maybe for companies that are just on this journey and they're just recognizing that disability is a sexy topic right now. And I think we can all assure there's over a thousand people at this conference today that have recognized what an important part of the piece from a marketing and brand perspective it is to include disabled customers. What are some actionable steps that companies can take or leaders within large and small organizations can take to ensure that disabled people are included in that narrative and storytelling? Huge topic. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the first thing is identifying and recognizing disabled leaders within your own organization and company, because they will be there. I think the current stat is one in four people are disabled and maybe your company has not yet, and not purposely, but not yet celebrated disability or created a, uh, an environment in which people are uh, excited to talk about it and wanting to integrate disability into everything that they do. So really put an effort and emphasis on identifying those leaders within your current company and organization and empower them to be able to make the, the decisions and, um, and express their opinions. So I think that's one thing, one small thing that people can do. Another thing I think is important is once you've identified the leaders and, and have a sense of what you want to build, listen to them. Yeah. Because often it's, it's easy to have a, a, a token person put up and this is our, our, our disabled leader. This mm. is, they're, they're, we have someone who's a director that, that is disabled and, and you ignore them for what they're doing. Listen to them about their experience. <coughs> Excuse me. Listen to the community and understand what the experiences are when you're, when you're trying to develop your, 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 com your company culture 
or you're trying to develop a product, listen to the community to understand what's there. And then once you have that understanding, be creative in terms of how you solve it. So lean into, it, lean into your skill, do what you're good at, but take the consideration and expectations and problems into mind as you're designing this, this process, this product, the solution, and then ask them, how do we do? Hmm. Because as you said before, it's, it's, it's an iterative process. It's, it's progress, not perfection. You have to continue to try again and again because you're never going to get it right. Hmm. Because there's always someone you didn't think of. There's always someone whose who's situation, either permanently or temporarily situationally, is beyond your expectations. Hmm. So as you're developing these services and products, provide options, provide customizations, make it possible for people to, to make the environment meet their need where and when they are. I would also say too, I mean, there's a lot of innovations as we see at this, at this um, event that are already happening. So sometimes you don't have to start from the very, very beginning. You can empower and in, invest in uh, innovations that are already happening that are being created by the disabled community for the disabled community. So I'd also say lean into inventions and innovations that are already happening. And we're learning from such a global perspective as well, right? This being one of the uh, most global conferences on disability in particular, as well as leaning into accessibility. And so I think we're, we're speaking from a Western lens, but recognizing that small scale innovations and solutions happening in the global south are certainly applicable to um, the Western world as well when we're thinking holistically about what is possible from assistive technology to marketing and media and representation. And with that, I want to take away kind of key points and messages on marketing in particular. One of the main topics I know that we cover is um, representation that is authentic and realistic. And so ensuring that brands and campaigns and specific social media assets, one, of course, have closed captioning and alt text, but two, actionable steps that can be taken, whether it is um, using the community that you have to empower them to make social change through social media, or working with product designers that might have not considered accessibility from the get-go, but can consider it now. And so what are maybe key steps both within very different industries that leaders can take forward as nuggets or, or thought pieces forward as they're looking to make that access journey from day one? And I think I'll challenge you there too. I think they're not two completely separate industries, mm. and I think that's the fun part about it because there's so much connection within our work and I think there does have to be that through line. There have to be those, and we've talked about this a lot, those focus groups, those people mm -hmm. who are going to be creating the briefs uh, for the creator campaigns, for the, for the marketing campaigns. They have to be there from the very, very beginning to understand what the real storyline is behind the product and the people behind the product as well. So I think that's an interesting thing that people can also do is uh, ensure that there is that through line and that storyline is truly authentic, not just with the people that you're casting in your campaign, but the people who have been there from day one of the inception of the product. And I think it, it's imp the most important thing for me is just, just to get started. Mm. Realize there's an opportunity, realize there's a need, and then come at humbly, I don't understand, so now we bring in our leaders, we bring in the, the focus groups, we bring in the community to understand mm. how we want to handle these things. And then once you understand how you want to handle it, just get started mm. because you're because you're never going to get it right the first time and maybe not the second time well definitely not the second time either but each time you do it you get better because you get more familiar with the space you have a deeper understanding a more nuanced understanding of the needs so then you get to start to be creative and that's really where the connection is there's so much creativity when it comes to code where it comes to mm. art when it comes to, to, to movies it's all a matter of telling a story and you just tell it in different ways and you, you do it authentically by understanding the needs and that storytelling piece is so critical, right? And I always refer back to Disney as being the key storyteller from a timeless generation, right? You think back to the films from the beginning, animations from Cinderella to Beauty and the Beast, and those narratives still have a role in today's society. And so whether it is a product launch or whether it is a film, making sure that those narratives are consistent, authentic, as well as representational of the communities that you're looking to serve. And so I think we've seen this in quite a few films. We've seen this in quite a few products that have resonance with today's world and today's society, specifically within the tech industry and specifically within what's maybe happening over at Avatar, if we can speak to that, because I think that's another really key important moment in which we've seen an entire industry change based off of one film. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, for 
for movies like Avatar. Um, we have a creator called CJ Jones. He created Navi Sign, the sign language that was used within Avatar 2. And now we're seeing people everywhere learning sign language. It may not be ASL or BSL or international sign, but it's Navi Sign. It's mainstreaming disability and it's getting disabled people more visible. And I think when it comes to product, we have to also remember the focus is on the world being inaccessible and disabled people being disabled by the barriers that we exist in society. And taking that emphasis and the onus off the individual to cure or fix their medical condition, but really putting it on the world and saying, actually, it's the world's fault. And that is what should inspire the, the products as well as the people who are experiencing those barriers. I, I, I noticed yesterday during the opening of plenary there, there was Binad, there was Matson, there was um, the, the, the uh, director from the UN and, and, and Caroline all in one image. Mm. And like, this is the world I want to live in. Yeah. Different ages, abilities, genders, countries. It, it, this is the world that we want. This is the world that we get to build if we, if we come at it from an inclusive perspective. To back to, to Navi Sign, what was really interesting here in the UK is after um, uh, Strictly Dancing, when the, the, a deaf woman won mm. the dance competition, and the, the, there was this really super powerful moment when, when she was dancing, they cut the music, and she's still going, because it doesn't matter, the, the music's in your soul. Mm. And she was able to bring that. <laughs> <laughs> it's really powerful, and it all of a sudden, it impacted people. People started learning BSL. Yep. It impacted legislation. So now there's the BSL law. Yep. So the, the 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 opening, the mainstreaming of a simple thing as a language, or the fact that the person can do what just what everybody else does, mm -hmm. is so powerful. And you make that human connection with someone, and you, you realize that we're all really the same. I always say to change the world. I believe we have to change the way that we tell stories. We have to tell stories about the world that we want to create. And I think that's really powerful. Yeah, I, and we talk about this all the time. If you don't see your representation, if you don't see yourself reflected both in policy, in marketing, in brand communication, you're not gonna resonate. And so what's really critical, I think, about the time that we're in and that we're living in now is that we see more of ourselves in the companies and in the world and in, within the policies that we're looking to influence and create. And so specifically to Navi Sign or to this deaf woman who was an absolutely beautiful dancer, think about the change and the absolute impact that's had on communities that have never before been represented in film or in industry or in brands and campaigns. And that visualization and representation is so critical to the moment that we're living in. And I, th I think that really shines through with the creator economy and how disabled people are showing up on social media and why we've got to continue innovating social media platforms to make sure that they are accessible and they don't perpetuate ableist stereotypes. Um, but I, I think as well, if we look to the employment of disabled people and still the gaps that exist, and even in the US, uh, how we've still got 37 states that have uh, a law in place where it's uh, legal to pay disabled people below uh, below minimum wage. Thanks to social media, even though there's a lot of work to be done, disabled people are finally getting out of the poverty cycle and able to, to start their own companies, build their own production companies, tell their own stories. So I think that's also very important when creating products of uh, thinking about the policies and how storytelling through the platforms that disabled people are uh, able to be on can, can influence that. I can make a short plug to Google Flutter, which is one of the most interesting, um, I think, any kind of development language we've seen in recent years because, to Keeley's point, if you are an innovator, you are a creator, what platform can you go to? How can you create an app? How can you make sure that you're still interacting with the world to also build your own narrative, build your own product. And so Google Flutter is one of the most incredible pieces of technology I've seen in recent years and was lucky enough to go to the, the conference a couple of years ago before the pandemic and would love to hear maybe some of the stories that have come out of that. Um, I've seen veterans create their own products. I've seen blind people create their own products and ultimately build their own businesses, which has never been done before. 
So for me, what's important about Flutter really is the intention in which what we at Google made accessibility a core part of what we were building. I think of these things as, as Lego blocks. Mm -hmm. And if you, build a, if, you want to, if you build with Legos, you want to use the real Legos or at least a consistent set of, of, of blocks, whether it's Duplo or what, whatever, what, whatever floats your boat. Um, but th there's a consistency in them, and they were designed to work together. So when you have something that's designed to be accessible and to work together, you can create an, an application that will work on the web. It'll create, mm -hmm. it'll be mobile, and it'll be accessible for everyone. So then you have the ability to, to, to reach out and communicate with everyone that you need to, and you don't need to worry about, is this piece going to fit here? Or is this piece going to fit there? Mm -hmm. So that allows you to focus your time on telling your story, building a brand, creating the product that's meeting the need that you want, because we're making it easy for you to be accessible when it comes to this, this platform that you're building for yourself, whether it's an app or a brand. We got the hard part. You just need to do, have the intention to do the right thing. And we see creators do that all the time, right? Whether it is advancing a social policy, advancing a product or a brand, and using their platform and creative voice to make money, whether it's from home or engaging for the first time with the gig economy, which has traditionally been exclusionary for disabled people that, I don't know, can't ride a bike or use um, Uber platform that isn't necessarily quite accessible. And so we've seen such innovation from creators who, for the first time, have been able to work from home to engage with brands and not necessarily need to be in an office. And so this entire world has changed in due part to the creator economy. And so we'd love to, I guess, wrap our conversation up with maybe some key takeaways in terms of what we're seeing out in the world today as key trends, both within brand and in industry. I think there's quite a few creators that we can highlight today that have had a tremendous impact just in this week alone, as well as brands and companies um, within Google, right, as an umbrella organization that have had a tremendous impact and access in the disabled community as well. So I'll, I'll let you take it first, Keely. Sure. Um, I think a key takeaway is I would say, as I said earlier, you know, seek out those disabled leaders within your own companies and organizations. And remember to normalize disabled people being experts in subjects beyond disability. Uh, I would also say, remember the power of storytelling and the power that you have in just, say, one post on social media or um, the language that you use. And also remember that accessibility is a community effort. Whilst we have wonderful policies in place in the US and the UK, it is an, a community effort to uphold those, and those are the foundations on which these solutions are built. They are not the solutions themselves. So continue to innovate and remember to have disabled people be a part of that process beginning to end. And for me, there's a, there's a couple things I normally talk about. One is when you're trying to create something for someone else that's not you, or even, mm. e even when you're building for yourself, do something you're good at. I, as a musician, I think like a, a jazz piano player, <laughs> they can play anything. But if you're learning chopsticks, you're not <laughs> going to really be able to create a great piece of music. So do something you're good at. And then be sure to include the, the community when you're creating the, the use case, where you're creating the interactions. Not, so nothing about us without us. Three, when there's so many disabilities in the world, it, it sometimes it gets scary. Mm -hmm. I hear a lot of people say, I don't know where to start. The most important thing is to just get started. So start with one feature or start with one bug. Hmm. Just, just get started because, it, and, and, and the last thing is, it is a language of progress. Yep. You're never gonna hit a place of perfection. It's, it's iteration, as you mentioned earlier. 10% better, and then 10% better, and then 10% better again is a whole lot better than waiting for this mystical, mythical 30-ish percent improvement. Because you can help people with each of these iterations. So just, just get started, bring people along with you, learn from and with the community. Absolutely agree. And I think my key takeaway from this conversation is build from the inside <laughs> out, right? Identify your champions and don't make them the token to what you had mentioned earlier. But once you've reached a point, make sure you advertise it. Make sure you let the world know. We see these small products, these small solutions that deserve a wider stage, that deserve to be presented, um, that, that, that deserve the community to follow along through. And so with that, I think we can learn from C-Talent as well as from Google and best practices and ways to do that. And so with that, uh, and for all of the audiences watching online, what's the best way to connect with both of you? Um, Good question. I would say LinkedIn, always great. 
Um, and also on social media, you can find C Talent under C Talent, say with LinkedIn, um, and also uh, my name. So LinkedIn, Instagram, all the platforms, you can find us there. I won't say all the platforms. LinkedIn for me is probably the easiest because that's where I probably spend the most time. And just so we can quickly let the, the audience know, Keely is spelled K. K E E L Y. No E before the Y. And Christopher. With a CH. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you very much for everybody joining online, and we hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank you.